Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about E. Now, what is E and why is it important? And what does it mean? All right, well, E is going to be called the natural base. What is the natural base? Well, the natural base is just that value that's derived from an expression 1 plus 1 over n to the n as n approaches infinity. So again, I can derive the value of e by rewriting this expression here as 1 plus 1 over n to the n. As n goes to infinity, this value approaches e. Now e we call a natural base or natural, natural base, and e is an irrational number. It's equivalent to about 2.718. So for your purposes, really, you can just think of e as a number, the number 2.718. Now, what do we mean by a rational number, by the way? An irrational number is a number which is going to have no end, right? It goes on and on and on. It doesn't stop. It's not defined specifically as some value. Uh, now I can say it's e, but there's no, just like pi, there's no end in the number of digits to e. But for our purposes, again, you can think of E as just a number, 2.7, or a number close to 3. There's nothing weird about it. You just have to think about when you're uh, handling uh, values of uh, E, just think about that value as a number, 2.7, or about 3. Right? So E is defined as a natural base. It's devised or derived from the expression 1 plus 1 over n to the n, and it is the value of this expression as n goes to infinity and we get to e at 2.718. Okay, so let's move on. Natural base function. So now we're going to talk about uh, natural base exponential function. We talked about exponential growth. We talked about exponential decay. Now we see uh, the natural base exponential function is in the form y is equal to ae to the rt. So remember we had y is equal to ab to the x, right? And that was our exponential growth and decay base, and in this case, exponential uh, natural base exponential function is almost exactly like our exponential growth and decay functions. Now, what's the difference between the two? All right, well, a is going to be the same, right? I have y is equal to a in the natural base exponential function, y is equal to a in the growth and decay model. And then the second piece is e to the rt, and in the case of growth and decay, I have b to the x. So what's the difference between e to the rt and b to the x? Well, not much really, because w what we're saying now is e is going to be some value, 2.7, whereas b can be a value between 0 and 1 or greater than 1 for exponential growth, between 0 and 1 for decay. But now we're saying that e is going to be this number, 2.7, which in this case is going to be, uh, would be exponential growth, but now we have to think about the exponents here that we're applying, and we can make the natural base exponential function an exponential growth function, or we can make it an exponential decay function based on what value we assign for r. All right, so let's think about what happens, <clears throat> and I'm going to substitute in 2.7 for e. Uh, in both cases, a has to be greater than zero. That's for exponential growth and decay and for natural base exponential growth and decay. So in, for our purposes for today, I'm not going to discuss A <clears throat> as a value other than it's going to be greater than zero for all cases. So now I say in an exponential function, I have 2.7 to the RT. All right, well, how can I make this a growth function? Well, it's already a growth function, right? So in this case, R, if R is going to be greater than zero, then this function becomes a growth function. Why is that? Because this value, r, as it's greater than zero, keeps this value as a base, which is greater than, uh, greater than one. It's not a fraction, so 2.7. Now, if I change the value of r and I make it negative, so if r is less than zero, right, so if I say r is going to be negative two, then this becomes a decay function because the value of b now changes to 1 over 2.7 squared, right? Now I have a fraction that's between 0 and 1. So I can change e to either a fraction by applying a negative exponent, 
or I can leave the value of e as it is as a value greater than 1 to make it an exponential growth function. What changes the value or what changes the uh, function to either growth or to decay is the value of r. If r is greater than 1, right, then we leave the 2.7 as it is as a value that is greater than 1 and I have a growth function. Now, if I change the exponent or the value of r to make it negative, then I create a fraction, 1 over 2.7 squared, which is between 0 and 1. Now the b value uh, is going to be between 0 and 1, and now I have a decay function rather than a growth function. So I really have two very similar, almost identical equations, but I have to insert this value of r to define whether the natural base expo exponential function is going to be growth or decay. So if r is greater than 0, then I have an exponential growth function, natural base exponential growth function. And if r is less than 0, now I have a fraction for b, and then the natural base function becomes a decay function. All right, so why is this important? Why is natural base important? When it comes, we talked about compounding interest, right? And we talked about uh, what happens when you uh, apply interest over a period within a period. So if I compound interest quarterly within a year's period of time, then my model changes right, to y is equal to that initial investment times 1 plus uh, the growth rate per year over the number of times you compound it within the given year to the nt. Now, what E will give to us is the ability to compound interest continuously, right? So I can continuously compound interest, and I can get a result from that. So now the model is going to be A is equal to the initial investment P multiplied by E, which is, again, just the natural base, 2.718, taken to the R, which is the interest rate, times T, the number of years. All right, so this becomes a little bit more simple model. And now I'm expressing a continuous growth or continuous compounding model versus just a periodic compounding model. All right. Now, E gives us a, a lot of other possibilities. But for now, let's just stick with this one financial benefit. And we're going to say, what is the value of $3,000 after three years if it is compounded continuously at a rate of 5%? All right. So we have our ending balance is uh, going to be equal to our initial investment times E to the rate expressed as a decimal multiplied by t of the number of years, which is 3. All right, so in this case, we need to follow our order of operations. And what we're going to do first is we're going to apply the exponent uh, to e. And the exponent is going to be 3 times 0.05. So it's going to be e to the 0.15. So e to the 0.15. So in your calculator, there should be a button that says e. So uh, work along with me. I have e, and I'm going to raise that to the 0.15, and I get approximately 1.16. And again, you should keep the entire value in your calculator. Don't, uh, don't round it just yet. And then you're going to multiply that. So I took the exponents first. Now I'm going to go to multiplication and multiply that value times 3,000, and I get an answer of $3,485. So 3,000 times uh, 1.16 gives me $3,485.50. So I've made about $485.50 off of uh, $3,000 if I leave it in some investment for three years at 5%. Now you can see the difference. If I compound continuously, I'm going to make more money than if I compound yearly. Right? So our yearly compound interest model is 3000 times 1 plus 0.05 to the third power. And if we do those calculations, I have 1.05. I take that to the third power, right? So I add the values in parentheses first, and I raise those to the third power. I get approximately 1.157. And I multiply that by 3,000. And you can work along with me, and I get $3,472 and about 88 cents. So the difference here is about $13. Now, when we're dealing with short periods and small sums, the difference is not going to be that great. But lar longer, larger periods and larger sums have a larger difference. So the value of E, when we compound continuously, gives us a result that's going to be greater than when we compound at a rate 
or a, a period that's uh, not as, or as I guess say, longer than a continuous rate. All right, so a couple benefits of E. Just real quick overview again of E. Natural base, it's derived from the expression one plus one over n to the n as n approaches infinity. E is just a number. It's an irrational number because it has no end to the number of decimals. 2.718 is the approximate value. I can either have an exponential growth curve or a decay function based on the value of R in my growth model, which is very similar to, or my uh, natural base model, which is very similar to both a growth and decay model. And it helps us to determine what happens to a, uh, a value which is uh, applied a percentage that is compounded continuously. All right, so come and join us in the next edition of Otten Math and handling some practice problems on E.